Right, first bonus clip. Mark, what's your, uh, this, whatever story of the two you want to tell first? Okay, um, well, so what you talk, though, there's a good story behind a horse called Cerati, uh, which I think caused a bit of stir on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter, but in 2012, when he won at Fonwell, a brief story behind him. Mike Blake, who's a friend of mine I've known for 20 years, he was starting training in 2010. Former uh, interviewee, Mike Blake. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So when he was starting, um, he, I knew he was going to start, and he said, Mark, I need some horses to get me off to a good start. So there's a horse called Cerati. He'd been trained by Alan King uh, in the 2009-2010 season, and he was running a claim on the flat at Kempton. He'd shown a bit of form over hurdles. So I rang Mike and said, Mike, you claim this horse. I think you'll probably win a couple of races in the summer. So he goes off to Kempton, he claims him. He then win, he's rated 115 when Mike got him. Of his first four starts with Mike, he wins three and he's third for the other. He's, his rating's gone up to 130. He probably hasn't improved a single pound. The simple fact is he's running in lesser races. So they proceed with this horse, um, the, 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 the owners, and he's too high on the handicap. He gets beaten, beaten, beaten. They try him over fences, he hates that. And so my, their owners have had, they're absolutely sick of him, well not sick of him, but you know, he's not gonna, he's gonna struggle. So Mike says, do I wanna buy him? And I said, mm, okay Mike, you might win a seller. So I think I bought him about 2011, uh, middle of 2011. Ran him in a seller at Hereford, didn't fancy him at all. Um, I think he beat one home, beat a mile, but I thought he'd improve for the race. It was a good seller. We then ran him back at Hereford about another 10 days later, another seller, and then much worse, and I had a small bet, tiny, tiny bet. I think he beat one home, awful. We then ran him at Ludlow, <laughs> tailed off, and then we put blinkers on him and ran him at Fontwell, and he was tailed off. So I think, absolute, absolute disaster. So I said to Mike, what are we gonna do? So Mike said, right, got it. Mike, he said, Mark, I can't believe this horse has lost all this form. So we turned him out in the field for four weeks at the, in February 2012, and Mike's bringing him in at night, turning him out during the day, starts to ride him at the beginning of March. And then, end of March, Mike rings me out and says, Mark, this horse is starting to come back. I said, okay. In the, in, in the meantime, Simon, his rating has dropped from 130 to 90. So he now can run in the lowest grade of hurdles. So another month goes by, um, probably end of April. And Mike says, you know, he's, Mark, this, I'm certain this horse is back. He's, he's up, you know, I think he's back to where he should be. And I'm thinking, well, I know he can be competitive for 115. So Mike takes him off and gives him a couple of gallops, bring in qualified, experienced jockeys to ride him. Don't tell them who he is. So we end up um, now with a horse that we think can, can certainly win off his handicap mark of 90. So I'm sort of thinking, he's not going to be a certainty, but we're running him in a 16 run handicap hurdle or a 12 run handicap hurdle. He'll be 16 to one and we'll be able to have a few quid on each way. So we enter him for a, uh, a race at Fontwell, beginning of June 2012. Uh, six runners. Over and over and I get the overnight declarations, there's six runners. Uh, I spend my whole life studying form. This is the worst race that I've ever seen. You've got six runners. Three of them can barely put a foot in front of, it, in front of one or the other. You've got the, the horse that's going to be put in his second favourite at Neil Mulholland's at the rate in 69 that was beaten in the cellar at Towster. And there's a horse, <coughs> excuse me, called Stravita. Um, ridden by Tony McCoy, going to be trained by, is trained by Huey Morrison, who's won its last two at Huntington and Taunton, both right-handed tracks, now running left-handed. They weren't great races, but I look, I look at it, and I, Mike I said, and I sort of can notice it's jumping out right-handed at every hurdle. So when you, when you jump, when you race right-handed, and you jump right-handed, you've got a slight advantage. When you run left-handed and you jump right-handed, you've got a disadvantage. The difference could be 25 lengths over two miles, eight flies hurdles. So I ring Mike at six o'clock the evening before. I said, Mike, I said, you're going to have to bet and win only. I said, but I think you'll probably win, but he's only going to be seven to two. And uh, anyway, next morning, don't look at the evening prices. Next morning, he's putting it 25 to one outside of six. So all of a sudden, this changes everything. So we head off into to Bristol betting shops. Um, I've got people around the country. My son goes off to betting shops in North Somerset. And his price gradually falls from 25 to one. 20 to 1, 12 to 1, 16 to 1, sorry, 16 to 1, 14 to 1, 12 to 1, 10 to 1. Now, the night before I thought he should be 7 to 2, and now he's 10 to 1. But because I've had 25 to 1, I'm now thinking, I don't want to dilute my value by having any more on. So I stopped at 10 to 1, um, comes to the race, and it couldn't have worked out better. Three of them were awful. Norma Holland was, was as it was. Cerati 
came, who was written by Tom Cannon, came around the final bend, went up the inside of uh, Tony McCoy. St uh, Stravita jumped out to the right at the second last and the last, and Sorotti won by 12 lengths. It's not always that easy, but that was one good day. Aye, aye.